I will say though, Billingsley coming back does help. You saw him a couple times today where yeah, when, yeah. when he, he's a good athlete, when he catches the ball in space, he can make guys miss. Um, we need to use him more. We have what's so frustrating is I feel like Sark gets keyed in on one to two guys a game and concentrates on getting them the ball. Then the rest of the guys he doesn't really use. Um, we've seen that multiple times. We see the offense is run through Xavier Worthy and Bijan Robinson, and it should be, but you also have Jordan Winnington. You also have Jatavian Sanders. You also have Jaleel Billingsley. Like these guys are good players. They should be getting the ball too. And I just don't understand why we need to be so focused on those two guys. I understand Bijan because he's the best running back in football, one of the 10 best players in college football, in my opinion. So use him uh, a lot, use him, but we also don't use him in the passing game. Like after he caught that touchdown in the backfield, where was he in the passing game? We didn't use him at all in the second half in the passing game. No, I don't think we're there, John. Uh, I don't think we're at the fire start, but something needs to change drastically. Uh, fire start, start talk comes next year at this time. If this is happening, if this is happening, the exact same thing time as next year, fire start starts to happen. And I will say this, this team is definitely better than last year's team. There's no doubt about that. There's not as much quit. Like the only guy that I've seen quit on Jaron Thompson. What the absolute hell was that? The man refuses just, just, to tackle. Just a, just an arm swap. Yeah. It wasn't even, it wasn't even an arm tackle. It was, he swapped him. And that you cannot, that's like, there's two positions in football. You cannot play if you refuse to hit people and it's linebacker and safety. If you don't, if you play those two positions, you have to be willing to absolutely put your health aside and blow people up. Those are the two positions and he plays one of them and he cannot be doing that. That reminded me so much of the shit BJ Foster was doing last year. Like, again, we have another high, highly rated guy that just has given up. And I just don't like, he's the only one though. I will say last year, there was a lot of them this year. It's him. And to be honest, this issue kind of was with him last year. That's why the coaching staff kind of benched him because he doesn't like to tackle. And I just don't understand that's a Tom Herman thing. Cause Tom Herman recruited him. How the hell do you recruit someone out of position that like that, that doesn't want to tackle? Um, kill my music. I don't mind running the ball. On first and second down, I rem I don't like the plays they were using when it was counter after counter. And once the counter was figured out, there was no adjustments there on how to run the football. You can get creative if it's not working one way. And you have a guy like Bijan Robinson, who's very talented. But again, you don't even have to run the ball. You can run pass plays that mimic run plays. If you want to get swing passes to Bijan Robinson, screens to be. When is the last time we have thrown a screen to Bijan Robinson? Have we ever thrown a screen to Bijan Robinson? I guess mostly been wheel routes and routes, little, yeah. little, little dump passes. Uh, so run a running back screen once in a while. Like there's multiple ways you can get him the ball. And I think a lot of the times with like guys like Steve Sarkeesian and Lincoln Riley, they like to keep it simple, but disguise it. Sometimes you have to get creative because your guys aren't as um, are very good, but they're being keyed on so much that they're being taken out of the game. So just be a little bit more creative is my um, one big thing with Steve Sarkeesian. Obviously, we have talented players, but you got to be a little bit more creative, especially in the second half of games. The problem with the team is there's multiple problems. One, I don't have an issue with the offensive line. I think the offensive line going forward, you've already seen progress this year. Kelvin Banks is going to be is really good. He had one bad game. I have no issue with that. I think the offensive line is fine moving forward. Um, Quinn Ewers needs to get better at reading defenses. Two, we need to be more creative in second half of games offensively. Three, we need to learn how to play the ball as defensive backs and tackle better. Those are the four biggest things with the team, 100% in my opinion. Do you have any opinion on that, D4? What do you think the biggest issues with the team are? I just, think, just play a 60-minute game. Just don't play, don't play 30. 60 minutes, let's go. I mean – if you can't, you know, you're going to go up against the number 11th ranked team in the country. If you can't get up for that for four quarters and leave it all out on the line, what are you doing in, in a Texas Longhorns uniform? Yeah. just And I don't I don't think the issue is really getting up more than, like, getting out of our own way in our own heads. I think that's a lot of the issue, too, is why you see, like, these boneheaded mistakes and then the lack of tackling, too. Like, especially in the set, third quarter, our tackling was abysmal in the third quarter. It was yeah, really oh. bad definitely if i stated what you, what i thought would be the biggest problem uh, on your team you'd accuse me of trolling i don't this it doesn't matter yeah i'd, be, I'd well, say it we're we're going to hear it regardless it's just like 
you go from you know the highest of highs of beating Oklahoma 49 to nothing to the lowest of lows, watching your team absolutely blow a lead in a game that should have been 45, 52 to 21. Yeah, that's the thing that gets me is like watching that game in the first half where we were clearly the better team. And then we just absolutely shit the bed in the second half. That's the biggest. I'd rather come out. I will say this. I hated the Charlie Strong era, but at least you knew early if the game was going to be a loss because that man got blown the hell out in every loss. Like, and when he lost, he lost big most games. So I don't mind that. I'd wait because at least by halftime, you're like, oh, well, we lost. We're good. I absolutely hate every week we have a lead and then we get stabbed in the damn heart. It sucks. I hate it. I do not like that. I would much rather take a blowout loss, even though that does mean you're closer. Obviously, we're way closer to winning in Steve Sarkeesian, the Tom Herman era, than we are the Charlie Strong era. But it's just, at the end of the day, a loss is a loss. And I'm just sick and tired of losing football games. Yeah, it's especially games that you you have double-digit leads in. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is an interesting take. I don't, I mean, I would I could see this if, if this started happening like five years ago, this has been going on for 12 years and that didn't, this has not been going, that has not been going on for 12 years. And I, I do agree that would probably have some rub off on your team. But again, this was 12 years ago that started. So I disagree with that, but overall it's just, it's frustrating because I feel like a lot of players are not locked in the way they need to be. I'm not saying they're not trying. I think that was the case with a lot of guys last year, but I think a lot of the guys are not locked in properly the way they should be for 60 minutes. No. They, yeah, that's that's evident with, you know, case in point, Jaron Thompson. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to be benched. Uh, he should not be playing next week unless he comes in for a couple uh, backup snaps and stuff like that. But he should not start. 